Hello there, and welcome to my series, The Unfinished Arcs of Star Wars The Clone Wars. In this video, we will be covering the fifth unfinished story arc, Son of Dathomir. Please note, there will be spoilers for The Dark Disciple Novel, The Son of Dathomir Comic, The Bad Batch, and Rebels. Back in 2014, this was the seventh story arc to be left unfinished but due to the final season in 2020 completing both the third and fourth unfinished story arcs as so was Walkabout and The Bad Batch, this one has now become the fifth. Taking up production codes 621624, this story arc was intended to be the fourth story arc from the full 20 episode original seventh season, and was the last arc from the sixth production season. Airing as episodes 30 to 60 of the original seventh season, these episodes would have most likely aired in the first few months of 2015, had development stayed on track. This story arc would have resolved the two season long cliffhanger of what had happened to Maul since his defeat at the hand of Sidious in season 5's The Lawless. While this story arc was released in comic form, as it was never finished on screen, it still technically counts as being unfinished, especially considering on screen stories have recently been contradicting elements of novel and comic ones. This story arc was written by new guest writer Ida Mashka Kroll and head writer Matt Michnovitz and was further adapted into comic form by Jeremy Barlow. Due to the point in development this story arc was cancelled, it is unknown if this story arc was ever assigned any directors for its four episodes. This story arc is one of the major ones regarded by many as a story that deserves to be on screen. We open the story arc with its first episode, The Enemy of My Enemy. Continuing from where the lawless left off, this episode would reveal that Sidious has Maul imprisoned in the spy on Stygian Prime. Sidious was tracked by two Maul DeLoreans, Gar Saxon and Rook Cast, who have orders from Ormek to liberate Maul from Sidious's clutches. Maul, chained up on the wall, is being taunted by Sidious when Count Dooku enters the room, angering Maul who sees Dooku as nothing but a Sith pretender. Maul's outfit design was created for this episode, being a shirtless version of his Season 5 Mandalorian outfit. Dooku and Sidious leave the room and discuss that Maul's imprisonment is to try and lure out Mother Towson from hiding, with Sidious revealing to Dooku about his history with Towson supposedly offering up a young Maul to Sidious as his apprentice. Sidious leaves but not before ordering Dooku to interrogate Maul to gain more information on the Shadow Collective. Arriving on Stygian Prime, Rook and Gar have to make their way to the 7th level of the Spire, but decide to create a diversion on the 3rd floor to draw away attention. Maul being tortured by Dooku's Force Lightning refuses to give up any information. Despite the diversion, Dooku is not so easily fooled, and has his battle droids pursue the pair of the Death Watch members. The battle droids end up being unsuccessful when Rook and Gar destroy a wall in Maul's cell and the three flee the Spire via zipline, and escape the planet aboard Maul's Mandalorian Gauntlet. The concept design for this gauntlet was also created before the cancellation, called the Knight's Brother. Being ordered by Dooku, General Grievous trails Maul with his Sepsis forces, Dooku making sure to inform Grievous to not kill Maul, the plan being to get Maul to assume they want to destroy the Shadow Collective and get him to locate Towson for help. Maul returns to Zambar and convenes with Ulmec via hologram, where Ulmec says he freed Maul as repayment for Maul freeing him on Mandalore. Maul regains the Darksaber and promises the Maldalorians that the conflict they wanted is coming to fruition. Arriving on the moon, the Separatist forces launch a full assault against the Maldalorians, with Maul facing Grievous in single combat. Deathwatch is badly weakened by the battle, with Maul forcing them to use their gauntlet fighters to bomb the air and decimate most of the Separatist forces. Maul eventually flees and retreats with the surviving members of the Maldalorians. Grievous talks to Dooku by hologram, informing him that Maul is retreating, but at the cost of a lot of their forces. Dooku disregards the loss of their forces as collateral as their goal to push Maul into Towson's clutches has gone as planned. Grievous wonders why Maul is important to Towson, with Dooku promising that he'll understand in good time. We continue the story in the second episode, A Tale of Two Apprentices. In the aftermath of the Battle of Zambar, Maul has fled and contacts Mother Towson just as Sidious and Dooku envisioned. Towson, through the use of her magic, convenes with Maul, who informs her that their operation on Zambar is no more. Towson figures that Sidious wants to lure her into a trap, so informs Maul about a Black Sun base on Ork Mantel, and tells him to prepare for another battle against the Separatists, so they can capture both Dooku and Grievous. 
Maul arrives at the Ormantel command post, regrouping with his Shadow Collective allies. This would have been the first on-screen appearance of Orb Mantel since it was first referenced in 1980's The Empire Strikes Back. Here is concept art for Orb Mantel, showing us what it would have looked like. We also have the designs created for the Orb Mantel command post, showing that it has a cathedral-like quality to it, as well as multiple different designs they could have used for the command post's exterior. Maul convenes with Zitam Moj who is representing the Black Sun, and Fife who is representing the Pike Syndicate informing them of the battle that is to take place and his overall confidence in their ability to succeed. Meanwhile, Dooku and Grievous are planning their own attack en route to Ort Mantel, with Dooku informing Grievous of the past history between Sidious and Towson. Maul plans to lure the Separatists into a strategic point where the Mandalorians, Black Sun and Pikes can all counterattack them at once. Mother Towson has also sent extra reinforcements consisting of the Night Brothers of Dathomir, with Brother Vicious leading them. The Separatists arrive in Orb Mantel's orbit and begin to orbital bombard the planet. With Maul ordering his forces to carry out their assault, and the Night Brothers to wait in the command centre for further instructions. While the Shadow Collective forces battle the droid army, Dooku arrives with a number of droid guards, and Maul leaves the planet's surface to advance on the Separatist fleet. Grievous realises they have been lured into a trap, while Dooku is accosted by the Knight Brothers. Moj and Five start to question Maul's objective, while the droids advance onto Ort Mantel's city. Maul, ignoring this, continues his space assault, eventually bordering Grievous' command ship and capturing it. Maul gives Grievous an ultimatum, either disable the droid signal or die. Grievous being the selfish being he is, disables the droid signal shutting down the battle droids, the Shadow Collective forces having been captured by the droids are now free, and while Dooku was able to defeat the Night Brothers in combat, he is ultimately taken into custody by the Shadow Collective. Contacting Mother Towson from the command ship, Maul informs her that they have been successful, and in return, she promises that it will only be a matter of time before Sidious is also captured and they can have their revenge. We reach the third episode with Proxy War. Due to the intensity of the Battle of Ort Mantell, it has drawn the attention of the Jedi, who sends an investigation team to the planet to see what has occurred. This team, including Mace Windu, contacts Chancellor Palpatine to inform him that it was, seems Maul was responsible for the battle. Concept art for the Republic's Ort Mantell base was created, showing them to enter the many casualties that was caused during this conflict. This piece of concept art is the last publicly known piece to have been created, dated a day after the announcement that production on the Clone Wars would cease. Other members of the investigation team include Obi-Wan, Tipley, and Ayla Secura, who go on to discover a Death Watch helmet, confirming their suspicions that Maul is allied with the Mandalorians. Further to this, Obi-Wan decides to launch an investigation into the outpost known as Vizsla Kipo 9. Here we have concept art of an asteroid belt near Vizsla Kipo 9 that they would investigate, with Republic gunships being present. Further to this, we have concept art for Vizsla Keep 09 itself, with both its exterior that contain multiple hangars and retractable turrets, and its interior designs being accounted for. At Vizsla Keep 09, Maul having captured Dooku Grievous informs Sidious via hologram, with Sidious replying that they are both failures and he's just killed them. Instead of killing them straight away, Maul orders Grievous to be separated from Dooku. While this is happening, the Republic begin to make their approach to the asteroid base, making Maul give Dooku a choice to join him or die. This is due to him now having also been betrayed by Sidious, which allows Maul to see the potential for them to work together. Mother Towson appears to the two Darksiders, again via her magic ability, and informs Dooku that she also was betrayed by Sidious when he stole her son from her, where it is revealed that Maul is Towson's actual son to a shocked Dooku. Explaining that Sidious always betrays his allies, Towson informs Dooku that Sidious is, as they speak, already working on replacing Dooku with yet another apprentice. The Republic begin their attack on the base, with gunships going up against Mandalorian gauntlets. Grievous in the resulting chaos manages to flee in an escape pod, while Dooku pressured for time agrees to join Maul. Obi-Wan, Tip Lee, Windu and Ayla board the asteroid base, with the former two being confronted by Maul and Dooku. The four Jedi and the two Darksiders engage in a lengthy lightsaber battle that ends with Dooku killing Tip Lee to Obi-Wan's horror. This is thanks to Gar Saxon who ends up distracting the Jedi by firing a missile at them. In the confusion, Maul and Dooku escape via a gauntlet fighter, with Maul promising that it won't be long before he sees Kenobi again. 
Windu informs Palpatine in the battle, telling him that they think they found their Sith Lord and apprentice, something that Palpatine knows is incorrect, but lets the Jedi believe it to his advantage. The final episode of this arc is titled Showdown on Dathomir. After the events of the previous episode, Maul and Dooku race towards Dathomir. The heads of the Black Saga Pikes contact Maul, concerned after they lost both Zambar and Lord Mantell. They feel that Maul's plan has failed, and this has just turned into some personal vendetta that is not beneficial to them. Maul has to reassure them that they will get paid in time, once Sidious has been killed. Maul orders Gar Saxon to keep an eye on their Shadow Collective allies to make sure they are kept in line. Maul then reveals to Dooku he's known all along that he's faking their alliance and is only siding with Maul as part of Sidious' plan. Rook cast and takes Dooku and keeps him in custody. On Dathomir, Maul convenes with Brother Vicious, who informs Maul that set up for the next part of their plan has taken place. Dooku is brought forward and taken by the Knight Brothers to appear in front of Towson, who appears out of her magic and begins to attack Dooku. While this is going on, the Scimitar appears in the orbit of Dathomir, containing both Grievous and Sidious. This would have been the first appearance on screen of Maul's Sith Infiltrator since it was seen in this Phantom Menace, and would have also been its first animated appearance. This also confirms that Sidious kept the Starfighter after Maul was left for dead on Naboo. Sidious and Grievous have tracked Dooku's location to Dathomir, with Sidious ordering a jamming of Dathomir's comms and for them to go into the Starfighter's cloaking mode. This allows them to go undercover, with Maul and the Night Brothers not noticing. Continuing their plan, Towson begins to drain the life force from Dooku so she can use it to manifest physically again, as she gave up her physical form to restore Maul's sanity after Savage found him. Suddenly, an explosion shakes the area. Grievous and Sidious appear and are ready to confront Maul. The Black Sun and Pikes inform Rook Cars that the Separatists have begun attacking their systems. They demand to know where Maul is, but Brook brushes them off saying they can fight the Separatists in the meantime. Towson begins to take over Dooku's body and uses it in combat against Sidious and Grievous. While Maul fights Grievous, Towson fights Sidious, with Sidious bombarding Dooku's body with lots of force lightning. Towson regains her physical form and releases Dooku. Rook continues to try and stop the members of the Shadow Collector from revolting. Being unsuccessful, they pull out and leave Maul on his own, as a Separatist fleet exits hyperspace above Dathomir. Maul manages to break the duel with Grievous and pushes him aside. Sidious meanwhile targets his Force Lightning on the newly revived Towson, being counteracted by Towson's green magics. Maul begs a weakening Towson to use his strength, as Dooku assists Sidious with a torrent of direct Force Lightning. Towson instead uses her last remaining strength to push Maul away, where he is caught by Rook and another Maldonorian. Grievous then approaches Towson and fatally impales her in the chest. Towson's eyes begin to roll into the back of her head as her flesh begins to flake off. A green mist of magic seeps from her body until it becomes a solid stone fossil. The design for Towson's death sequence shows us that the date was incorrectly listed as 2003, which makes no sense when the Clone Wars didn't even start pre-production until 2005, and Towson doesn't exist as a character until Season 3, with the correct year obviously being 2013, alongside the other designs released for this arc. With Maul's Shadow Collective in ruins, he and the Maldalorians flee Dathomir. Meanwhile, Sidious, Dooku and Grievous look at Towson's lifeless fossil. Dooku's concerns of Maul's escape are disregarded by Sidious, who regards him as unimportant now that Towson is no more, declaring in glee that the future of the Sith has been secured. At the time of the cancellation, this story arc had reached a design stage of development, being the last one to do so by March 2013. Sadly, this story arc wasn't able to be story reeled in time, which also tells us that voice actor never commenced with either, as was the case with the previous two unfinished story arcs. Being the last of the sixth production season, this arc was the last arc of production to get fully commissioned content art created for it, with every story arc after this only existing in the form of draft scripts and sketches done by Dave Filoni during the story pitching stages. The comic adaption of this story arc provided opening calls for each part. These are most likely what would have been the opening narrations that would have been voiced by Tom Kane had these episodes been fully produced. Every location from this story arc has either appeared on screen beforehand or would later appear in a main animated project after this. 
Zambar and Daphne would return for previous episodes of The Clone Wars, while Stygian Prime would go on to appear in the Star Wars Rebel Season 1 episode of Rise of the Old Masters, presumably using assets created for this story arc, but tweaked and repurposed for the Rebels' art style. Alderman Tell would take the longest to appear on screen after this story arc's conception, finally appearing in the first season of the Bad Batch spin-off in the episode titled Rampage. Though the city streets did appear in a Forces of Destiny short, based on the concept art created for this arc. Vizsla Keep 09 would make its own on screen debut in the third season episode of Star Wars Rebels The Holocons of Fate, probably again using altered versions of unused models intended for this story arc. The Holocons of Fate would also show us that Maul still has his Mandalorian gauntlet that would have been introduced with this story arc. The RIC-1200 droids first seen in Shades of Reason and later on in the Rebels episode Holocons of Fate could very well have been planned to appear in the on-screen version of Son of Daphomir before being cut out of its comic counterpart. The concept art for the asteroid belt in this story arc would later go on to be tweaked and reused in Rebels Season 1, with the Republic gunships removed, the asteroids being moved around a bit, and the overall colour grading being changed from a light blue tones to a bronzy brown colour. Two of the characters introduced into this story arc would later appear in The Siege of Mandalore, Rook Cast and Gar Saxon, with Vanessa Marshall cast to voice Rook and the late Ray Stevenson voicing Gar Saxon, who first took the role in Season 3 of Star Wars Rebels when Gar Saxon made his on-screen debut in that show. It is said that a creature called the Shatterax would have made an appearance in this story arc before being cut from the vinyl version of the comic. As seen in early Dave Filoni sketches, Quinlan Vos was meant to appear in this story arc fighting Maul on the orders of Dooku after he became his apprentice at the end of the Dark Disciple arc. It is not known, however, if Quinlan was cut during the development stages of the episodes, whether he was excluded from the comic version based on the Dark Disciple context not yet existing due to the release of the comic predating the novel. It's most likely that the sequence on Zambar with General Grievous was once envisioned with Quinlan Vos fighting Maul instead but Quinlan's overall presence in this arc would most likely have been kept to a minimum due to how the whole theme of the Save of Voss arc was whether Quinlan was truly a traitor or not, with the pretense of him being locked up in a cell for months ever since he got captured at the conclusion of the Dark Disciple arc. This story arc has a neat foreshadowing to the Siege of Mandalore, with Maul hinting to Obi-Wan that he will see him again soon. This eventually being followed up on when the 2020 final season of the Clone Wars showed Maul expected to see Kenobi on Mandalore instead of Ahsoka. The Siege of Mandalore makes a light reference to this story arc in return, where Maul references Rook and Gar rescuing him from Sidious. It's possible that Anakin Skywalker could have made some slight appearance in this story arc originally, possibly reviving scenes cut from the Lawless episode that show Palpatine telling Anakin not to go to Mandalore, except this time it would be Palpatine convincing Anakin not to go on the mission to Vizsla Keep 9 with Obi-Wan. The reason this could have been cut from the comic is because it was possibly thought to be an unnecessary usage of time and resources to draw Anakin for use in one sequence that ultimately doesn't affect the story. This story arc originally saw the complete collapse of the Shadow Collective, but when the final season version of Ahsoka's Walkabout released, Maul had suddenly regained control of them, with that story arc now implied to take place after the events of this one. Not only that, but now sometime between this story arc and Ahsoka's walkabout, Maul has formed Crimson Dawn, an organisation he will continue to run from behind the scenes until Star Wars Rebels. The conclusion of this story arc originally suggested that Maul returned to Mandalore as it was the only thing left after the death of his mother, with the whole point of his syndicate being formed so that he and Talzin had an army to fight against Sidious in revenge for Sidious stealing Maul from Talzin as a child. Maul not having his syndicate in Rebels also keeps up this continuity, with him also no longer being the leader of the Mandalorians, as he abandoned them in the Siege of Mandalore arc, with Maul only having the droids on Vizsla Keep as allies. I believe Maul being completely on his own is what ultimately drives him to his desperation of wanting to find Kenobi, maybe even knowing that Kenobi will give him the peace and vengeance he craves. The appearance of Fife in place of Mark Krim in this story arc indicates that the continuity of Mark Krim's implied death from Dark Disciple's second episode was also originally kept, but with the Siege of Mandalore including him in the hologram, we know this is no longer the case. This means that Mark Krim can now appear in an animated version of this story arc if they ever finish it on screen, due to said implied death no longer being accurate. Compared to other story arcs, these retcons aren't that major, but Maul's retreat into Mandalore now makes less sense now that he forms Crimson Dawn in what is an already very crammed year in the Star Wars universe. 
This story arc is the third out of four arcs I see as being vital to being completed on screen animation, as it literally fills the gap between season 5 and final season Maul, as it now seems like Maul used a cheat code to escape Sidious and return to running his syndicate. This story arc is also important for the character of Towson, where it recontextualizes her entire motive throughout the Clone Wars, showing that she was just another victim in Palpatine's long game, and that all of her actions to this point have been because she had her son stolen from her. While many people say that people will just look at a summary of the story arc and move on, I believe it deserves much more than that. It deserves all four of its episodes to be represented on screen. With Sam Witwer even voicing his concerns about wanting to complete this arc back when the Clone Wars came back for the final season in 2020. I'd also love to have Ian McDermott be given the chance to voice Palpatine in this arc, with it continuing the in-person presence of Sidious previously seen in The Lawless, with Ian's voice having immense screen presence that would only further amplify the severity of Sidious's presence in this story. I know this story arc would make one epic and captivating 90 minute animated special, if not part of the first season of a spin-off show completing Clone Wars' 40 unfinished episodes, being a good candidate for the finale of said first season. Sam Witwer, alongside all the other cast members including Barbara Goodson, deserved the chance to come back and complete this story arc, allowing characters such as Towson to get their stories finished on screen and for one of the most action-packed parts of Maul's story to finally be shown in the medium it was intended to be. The following unfinished story arc would take us back to the story of Ahsoka Tano, when she is forced to return to the Jedi. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed, please like, subscribe and comment. Until the next time, goodbye.